Our city's infrastructure is, especially after the, the harsh winter we've had, is, is, is in need of repair. Uh, I think we also need to look at what can we do to, uh, to improve transit in our city. I think that uh, we have an opportunity to, to let voters here in Marion County decide if they want to invest more in an improved bus service, uh, improved stops, more frequent routes, uh, better buses. Uh, I think that you know, I, I came across a, uh, at a town hall, someone said, they said, well, nobody ever uses the bus, so why would we invest in it, right? Nobody's really using it. And uh, a lady who was visually impaired, she stood up and said, well, I use the bus, and, but I have to. I have no choice. I have to ride the bus. And, you know, I, if, if I had a choice, I wouldn't because this bus system that we have is not good enough. It doesn't run, it doesn't run on time. It doesn't run frequent enough. It doesn't run to the right places. So why would anyone choose, if they could, to ride the bus? And so the people that are on the bus now are people that don't have a choice. But we need to create a system that people will say, this is, this is an alternative to, to driving. Right now, it's only if it's a necessity, if it's, if it's something they have to do. So I think by taking bus stops from being a, a sign on a pole and actually have a bus stop where people can sit and stay out of the cold a little bit. People will be more likely to, to use it, having buses with Wi-Fi on them. Uh, maybe a mobile app where people know where the buses are. And if, you know, this isn't uh, earth shattering technology that we need to, to get here. I mean, Uber has the ability to know where cab drivers are all around the, the, the city. Why can't we know where the buses are? And I, I think that um, this is an important step for our city to take uh, to get to the next level as um, you know, Indianapolis has really put itself on the map but I think that we're still lacking in this area. The state has an opportunity to make the first real investment in, in pre-K, and we're, we're on the verge of it. Uh, there's some folks that are a little hesitant uh, in believing that this is uh, more than just daycare. I think the important thing to, to, to talk about is that this will create a, a real distinction between daycare and pre-K because programs that are subject to oversight and standards, uh, that will be educational, geared toward education and, 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 and engaging kids versus what just daycare is. And those programs won't be approved and won't be funded uh, for students to go to. So I think what it does is it, it gives parents a real choice. Do I want to send my kid to school or do I want to send them to daycare? And if they want to send them to school, we want to help monetarily with that decision. And all studies show that um, getting kids engaged at an early age not only helps with their educational achievement, it helps with socialization and getting them uh, to feel like uh, they have a role in, in the community and, and it really gets them engaged in school. And you know, oftentimes a lot of kids that struggle have a lot of issues um, outside of the classroom and getting them in, in, a, in a structured environment early, as early as possible, will help uh, with their down, down the road development. Last year we passed out a committee, education committee, unanimously an, an effort to try and get, get our best and brightest students to not only go into the field of teaching but to stay here in Indiana. And so uh, we, we were going to offer them $9,000 in student loan forgiveness if they committed to the field of teaching in a, an area of science, technology, engineering engineering or math, special education, or they taught in a school that was struggling to find other teachers. Oftentimes that's an urban or rural school. And what we, we wanted to try and do is we, we geared that towards students that, that performed uh, in the top 20% of their, their high school class and then went on in college and, and maintained a 3.5 GPA. And this year we, we passed out a committee again, it got hung up in ways and means. Uh, but after continued efforts, we were able to get it amended into a Senate bill, uh, which is passed out of the House now. Uh, unanimously and is now waiting on a concurrence in the Senate. Hopefully it'll get concurred. Uh, the governor's office is supportive of this now and uh, they're, they're hopeful that next year we can fight to get an appropriation for this and uh, you know we, we see this as a way to, to attract uh, best and brightest students to the field of teaching but also a way to help with the brain drain keeping uh, giving an incentive a monetary incentive for people to stay here in Indiana and give back their talent.